I struggle with severe social anxiety and panic attacks. And whenever I try to notice my survival mind is so strong and I feel a range of negative emotions, which makes me leave the social situation. Well, Ibrahim, there's a lot of things going on here. Firstly, let me ask you, every single one of you, would you ever, ever show up to a marathon without preparation? <laughs> show up to a marathon as a runner without prepping or without training and just kind of think, let's go for the best. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> Probably not. What would you do to ensure you succeed in that marathon? If you know something's big coming up, what do you have to do to ensure you win? You got to prepare. They say success is all about preparation. Yes, fail to prepare, you best prepare to fail. So understand that emotion is the ocean, the inner ocean, yes? Some people, because they haven't prepared well, the moment the big wave comes, the storm comes, what ends up happening to that person? They drown, they drown, they drown, yes? But every now and then you come across somebody who's skilled, like a sailor, right? No matter how big the wave is, no matter how many storms are coming in, a skilled sailor, understand, can ensure they can get to their destination. It's not like they can control the ocean because nobody can control the ocean. But guess what? They can sail as if they're in control. Making sense? Because they have prepared. Because they know how to react. Once you understand the inner emotional ocean, you can allow the ocean to help you. So you can learn to surf the waves of life instead of being drowned all the time. But for now, here's something that's very important. Having struggled a lot with anxiety, yes, especially severe social anxiety, that used to be one of my big things I was trying to overcome back in the days. Having struggled with this personally is important you understand. What is the prime driver of more anxiety? What brings more anxiety? It's withdrawal as well as escapism. The more you withdraw, the more you escape anytime you feel anxiety, the stronger that anxiety tends to become because you haven't resolved the actual issue. It's kind of like, have you ever avoided something you feared, right? As in you didn't face the fear, you just kind of brush it on the carpet. The more you avoid what is, the greater that monster becomes, right? But have you ever taken action on something you told yourself is a freaking big fear and you're like, you did, you do it. And you're like, oh, is that it? <laughs> that wasn't that bad. You know what I'm talking about? So it's important you realize the more you withdraw, the more you avoid, the more it can actually begin to grind down your very telomeres. That's your actual DNA, by the way. You get to a point where you've trained yourself over and over again, biologically, psychologically, that I've got to run away from danger. All of this is dangerous. All of this is dangerous. And you're creating a habitual response called, called fret. And there was a study conducted amongst individuals, American soldiers who was captured during the Vietnamese war. They had endured CPTSD, right? They had endured numerous different complex traumas from tortures they had to endure. What was interesting though, not every single soldier came out bitter. Some came out better. You've heard me right. And the psychologists who looked in depth in terms of why did some soldiers come out more stronger, not weaker, it came down to the psychological response. Would you like to know what it is? There are two ways of responding back to reality. You know these two ways, you can train yourself starting right now. Would you like to know what it is? Yes? Coming after the break. I'm joking. I sound like a Netflix episode, right? But <laughs> the first way, write this down, is a fret response. Fret response. Some of these soldiers were saying, this is a fret, this is a fret. Every time they're being tortured, this is a fret. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. This is a fret. And these were the ones who came out the worst in terms of complex PTSD. Whereas look at the soldiers who came out better. They were seeing it as a challenge. Just notice how that feels. When you say this is a fret versus this is a challenge. Do you notice it almost like calls your body forwards? Your, your body is preparing for a challenge to be challenged, right? There's a level of growth that your body is now anticipating. So the soldiers who kept on seeing it as challenge, this is challenging me, this is strengthening me, this is challenging me, they actually were able to heal much faster. 
So it's important, Ibrahim, you get into the habit of not habitually running away because what is will just become greater. So remind yourself this, the biggest lie you can ever tell yourself is because I've rearranged my life, my problems no longer exist. That's the biggest lie you can ever tell yourself. Now, what does that really mean? If you seek to rearrange your life and you believe if life looks different, I'm going to feel different. I'm here to say you're still stuck in a prison because you haven't resolved the actual problem. You're trying to change everything outside of you, but you haven't changed anything inside of you. No amount of somebody can give you the love you're wanting because deep down you hate yourself. Making sense? Some people think one day when I got all the money in the world, I will feel free. They don't realize freedom is a state of mind. It's not a condition of life. It's a state of mind. Some people are so poor, all they have is money. Right? <laughs> so this is why you got to look to resolve the inner problem, not let me change this. Let me run away from this, then I'm calm. Because you haven't resolved anxiety. Anxiety is still there. And it's going to follow you for the rest of your life. So it's ever so important you train yourself well, respond better. That's the key.